Hello Forester fans, my name is Lily Evans and today I'll be interviewing Coach Cat about the upcoming game against Grinnell. How do you prepare for a more competitive game after coming from a fairly easy win? Yeah, I mean I think a lot of that is our player focus of the process is more important than the result. I mean I think we went into last week's game like we do most games expecting to win and, and letting the guys know that winning is not the final goal, it's just the goal of that day. And if we're really trying to get to where we want to be and then start taking some of those postseason steps, it's going to take a lot of building blocks that have been stacked weeks and months before we get to those games. And taking that approach to each practice of saying, okay, would you practice differently today if you were preparing for North Central in the first round of the playoffs than how you're preparing for um, Lawrence last week or Grinnell this week? And if the answer to that is yes, then, then there's a problem. If the answer is no, we understand it, then that's how you get the – the really special development and then you don't really to be honest with you care who the opponent is you just want to prepare for that game and the schemes and things that you're going to be seeing. Grinnell has a very dynamic quarterback named Grayson Woodhouse. Um, how do you plan on shutting him down? Yeah Grayson is a very dynamic quarterback. He's got a I think he should wear a magician's hat instead of a helmet when he plays. He uh, He's made a lot of plays that to be honest with you um, are unexpected and he keeps the team alive and he uses his legs to do that and, and moving in and out of the pocket and, and a bunch of different things. Um, we haven't seen Grayson um, in a year because he didn't play against us last year because he was hurt. And so uh, he does provide a unique challenge. Um, we do need to be prepared for him and all the different things that he brings to the table. And, uh, you know, for our guys on defense, a lot of it's about discipline and then, you know, especially keeping the cage clean, uh, which is the, the box and the tackle box, not letting them have escape lanes. And if we can keep him in the pocket and um, you know make him have to throw on time and things like that, I think that's truly advantageous for us, and we have the defensive line to do that. Defensively, you've held teams to zero points. How do you continue to do this? Yeah, I, I mean we've. I, I think our guys know that the execution and the eye discipline is what's really helping them make plays right now. Um, keeping teams off schedule and really making plays when the ball is near us. And then, you know, if a pass is coming, getting a deflection, getting an interception, whatever it might be, as, an off, as a defensive lineman, making sure that we're in the throwing lane so it's not a clean look for the quarterback. And then in the run game, making sure we're stout on first downs. And uh, you know, where our defense has been really successful this year is in third down conversions and getting teams off the field in three and outs. And, um, you know, one of the best ways to play defense is to have your offense on the field. And so if we're on the field, you know, running the football, then they don't have to come out and, and make a lot of plays. And I think that um, keeping them fresh and focused is, is one of our goals and that complimentary football. But they, uh, they just make plays. So they're a senior leading group, and they're smart, and they know the playbook inside and out. And so for me, um, yeah, they just got to keep doing what they're doing. They're, they're, they're playing at a really high level right now. Offensively, the team has been doing really well. How do you feel about facing Grinnell, and what will you do to succeed? Yeah, I mean, Grinnell's going to present us a little bit of, they're going to be unique. We have not seen the, the coverage structure that they run um, thus far this season. They're, they're a uh, Palms coverage team, and so we haven't seen as much of that this year from other people. Um, we've been seeing a lot more cover three or man coverage and a little bit of quarters. But um, I think that with what they do and how they, they try to approach it on the perimeter, we'll have to adjust some of our, you know, um, passing concepts that we're going to be using. Um, the run game should still be solid with what we do there, a four-man front, which we've seen every week except for uh, Wisconsin Lutheran. So I, I think that the more we see the same front, the better it is for us. And, you know, in a week or so, we're going to have to change because we'll see an out front finally. And so it'll be uh, a different week that week. So I, I do think that with what they've changed to on defense um, and the explosive players that we have on offense, we should still be um, you know, pretty strong and able to score a bunch of points. The, the matchups on the perimeter, I think, favor us. Like, even though their scheme may be something different, I think that the T-Lands, uh, you know, Trevor Land, Langston Matoyer, um, Jake Costries, AJ Jackson, Seth Jelovich, Dax Lindholm, the guys who have all proven they can catch balls and make big plays for us. Um, I just think we have the ability to deploy a lot of different looks and a lot of different people and then find out who's the best matchup for, for each guy on our team. All right, that's all I have for today. Thank you, Coach Kevin. Thank you.